you support a company that doesn't support you? That's my question today. People often come onto this channel and say, recasts are bad. Recasts are the reason that Forge World's removing products from the range. Because it's the recasters' fault that uh, transfer sheets go out of production. But what has buying from Forge World and Games Workshop done for you, the consumer? Because this show is about consumer awareness. As much as we hang shit on things and talk about all random topics, at the end of the day, we're there to inform people about things we've noticed in this hobby. What are good bargains? What are good tips and tricks for painting your models? What are interesting gameplay ideas? How do you get involved and started in different parts of this hobby? That's what we do here. And today, I'm posing the question, what are they doing for you? If you went out and you spent thousands and thousands of dollars, we're talking like $3,000 Australian plus, to buy yourself a War or Titan, for example. Forge World has just turned around to you and said, the only markings available for your Titans, we're removing from production. What message does that send you, the consumer? What has your spending money with them enabled? The production of more high quality, and I put that in quotation marks, high quality miniatures, this company that can't even put grips onto weapons in people's hands. And they're producing the highest quality miniatures in the world. You could have spent your money at a recaster. You could have bought an Imperial Nighthead for six American dollars instead of ten British pounds, which is about sixteen American dollars, give or take. I mean, it has the same outcome for you in the end. Either way, the decals are going out of production. The crews are going out of production for knights and for titans. What about the uh, Mechanicum Phalanx cohort with Irad Cleanser? Well, you know, you didn't need that weapon anyway. It's only an essential item of war gear. But no, fuck it. You see... Saying that you're removing products to make room for more in your range is all good and well, provided you bring out more models, which Games Workshop isn't. They're not bringing out more models. Well, I should, I'll rephrase that. Forge World isn't. Games Workshop is. What is Forge World bringing out? Let's have a look. Goblin Mercenaries, Alpharius. Didn't these models come out two months ago? It was something like that. Six weeks. Rogal Dawn. How many months ago did Rogal Dawn come out? Five months ago? Can't have been more than March, I don't think. Constantin Veldor. Well, he only came out two months ago, maybe. But the thing is, they're not really releasing much. A lot of stuff's going out of production, but they're not releasing much. No, because right now, they're trying to bankroll Specialist Games. Specialist Games. The tumour of Games Workshop. See, Specialist Games is fine when it was a part of the gigantic entity that is Games Workshop. You see, Games Workshop, they've got this little side company called Forge World, and Forge World works for them. They do basically what Games Workshop says. They're their little bitch, the little Theon Greyjoy to Ramsay Bolton. And Forge World wants to make all these different miniatures, and they've got their Horus Heresy game. All of a sudden, along comes Games Workshop, and they're like, oh no, you're going to look after Titanicus, Necromunda, Blood Bowl. All these other games. You're going to develop them. You're going to spend your staff, your resources, your computers to sculpt it, build it, paint it. And Games Workshop are going to come along and we're going to sell it. And your limited staff, limited budget, limited capabilities are going to be pushed to the extreme. And here's the results of that. You get a little bit of everything, but not much of anything. You see, there's what, two Lord of the Rings releases here? to Necromunda, four things for 30k in the whole year, it feels like. I think there's been one or two other things this year, the Aurochs, uh, the Termite. Oh yeah, you get some doors, some new versions of old things, doors for Rhinos and Predators and Land Raiders. Well, you know, that's good to see. But you're not getting much here. It's only a few products, and in the same amount of time, Hundreds of products have gone out. I think we're around the 200 products mark have been removed from production. You see, 
bullshitting your people, bullshitting the people that support you and saying, oh, we're bringing out all these great new products, only for you to not bring out a lot of products, yeah, it doesn't work very well. It lasts only so long. And right now, all these people are probably screaming at me watching this video. Oh, they actually, no. They didn't even get this far. They usually just dislike it after the first two sentences and then say, you didn't cover this Maca, even though I'll cover it later in the video. That happens a lot. It's the internet. What do you do? People are fucking children. Um, people turn around and they go, you don't understand. Games Workshop knows what does and doesn't make money. But no, it's not that simple. You see, Games Workshop doesn't understand what does and doesn't make money. It's not as black and white as that. Games Workshop are looking at all these products they've got in production. They're going, we don't have the resources to support Forge World currently to produce these kits. We need to free up staff and we need to free up production for all this other specialist games bullshit and nonsense. So the only way to do that is by getting rid of products. Now, they're not being discreet about which products they're getting rid of. They're not going, hang on, this is essential, so we can't take that out of it. They're just coming in and they're just going that, 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 that. They've probably got a spreadsheet. What sells the least? And certain things are just getting ticked off that list. But, but, this is a big but, it doesn't mean they didn't make money off them. And also, some of those products you know people bought a fucking lot of. Like Graviton guns. Graviton guns are being removed from production, but you know people bought a lot of them. Shoulder pads. How many armies have people seen with the molded shoulder pads? Probably hundreds, if not thousands of armies with them. A lot of people don't like using decal sheets. I have 7,000 points, 1,000 suns, most of which have molded on 1,000 suns legion emblems on their shoulders. And all of them have legion torsos and legion helmets. And yet people will turn around and say, oh no, well, you know, that's just one example. Even though you can look on any page about Horus Heresy and see just how many thousands of kits have been sold of chest upgrades, helmet upgrades, that kind of thing. People bought it, people bought into Horus Heresy, people bought into Forge World, and they bought all this stuff, and they did the right thing. They went, they spent their money with the company, and the company just turned around and went, eh, well, you know, we're just going to remove shit from production. And Imperial Knights, great example of that, and Titans. Meanwhile, you go over to your recaster. You can buy an entire War Lord Titan for 500 American dollars. Or you can go to Forge World, spend all your money with that Titan, and then they'll take the decal sheet for it out of production just to say, fuck you. That's the message they're sending to the customers, I think. And then other people will go, but Maka, you really don't understand the economics behind this. Because, think about it. These kits, they hardly sell any at all. They're really expensive, hard to produce. They've got to make them in resin. they just got to make them in resin, Maka. There's no way you could make a plastic kit the size of a Warlord Titan and make it for anything less than $1,000. Except companies do. This is a Dora Railway Gun Model Kit. This model is huge. You can see it next to this old gentleman in the uh, picture. It's a massive kit. This is the biggest model sold in the world. Anyone want to take a guess what this costs? It's entirely plastic. 3,000 parts. It's a lot more than an award titan. Anyone? Any guesses at all? 595 pounds, half the cost of just the body of a Warlord Titan. You'd still have to buy its two arms, its two shoulder guns, and its head separate. Which takes you up to about the 1500 pound mark. So it's basically one third of the cost of a Warlord Titan. This is the largest miniature in the world, and it has a lot of detail. A lot of detail. The crew are basically the size of Imperial Guardsmen on it. It is a 1 to 35 scale, so it is slightly different. Games Workshop's a 28mm heroic scale. But they're similar. And it's fucking monstrous. This thing will take up most of your kitchen table. It is a massive, massive kit. And incredibly detailed. The amount of rivets, single little shock absorbers on it. The gangway planks. They can't produce anything near this. The terrain, for example, that's designed for Necromunda and Shadow Wars Armageddon and Kill Team, all that plastic grim industrial factory terrain, is nowhere near the quality of this. 
and how much they sell it for. Think about it. Your loyalty to this company and just putting up with this bullshit has gotten you nowhere. I'm hearing rumours that Titanicus itself is going to cost upwards of 150 to 200 pounds British. This is the Battlefront 2 of Games Workshop. For those who don't know Battlefront 2, it was a computer game released last year by Electronic Arts, who's notoriously anti-consumer. They had some very bad uh, systems implemented in their game, basically tantamount to forcing children to gamble if they wanted to progress through the game. And rightfully, they got called on it. And people didn't buy the game. How badly did they fuck up? Well, they nearly lost the Star Wars license, and they lost billions of dollars. Their share price was devalued by only a few percent, but it was enough to cost them billions. And that was just from people saying we're not buying the game and boycotting them. That's the kind of message you have to send to Games Workshop here. Don't just buy these specialist games and support their bad business practices because you're afraid of losing that game. Oh, what if they stop making Titanicus? So, so what if they do? They've done it before. The fans stepped in and kept the game alive. The fans built models for it. The fans made titans for it. The fans made rules for it so you could play those games. You don't need Games Workshop for these things. But just putting up with anything they do to you and saying, oh, it's okay, they can bend me over and fuck me up the ass as hard as they want, just so long as they give me my precious game, that is the worst attitude you as a consumer can have. This is my warning to people. If you support them and you support their decision making, they are going to keep doing the same bad things to you. People want to turn around and say, Games Workshop's a great company now. They've really turned it around since Kevin Roundtree took over. Yeah, they have for Games Workshop. But what have they turned around? They have social media now. Great. There's a cupcake shop in town here that has social media and they're more responsive than fucking Games Workshop is on it. And if I ask them a question like, oh, what type of icing do you use on that cupcake? They'll tuck and tell me. They won't turn around like Games Workshop will and say, I don't know, we'll have to talk to the servitors about that, wink wink. It's like, just answer the fucking question. Be candid with people if they ask you questions. What's this gonna cost? Oh, I don't know, you should check out next week's White Dwarf, wink wink. Just answer the fucking question. You know, like, fuck. You haven't even mastered basic social media. They have open days and things like that. That's great to see. But, fucking Electronic Arts, the worst company in America they were voted numerous times. They have a fucking open day. They have E3, where all the games manufacturers get together and show off all their stuff. Games Workshop is just one participant in the model community and people let them get away with murder. If Games Workshop was started today, they would not be a successful company. Their business practices are too bad. But right now they survive because they have a massive brand name. They have brand recognition. They've been in the game so long and got so ingrained into people's psyches. People buy their stuff just on the whim, just, oh, that looks cool, I've got to buy it. And then you see models for sale all the time on eBay, buy, swap, sell things like that and they're saying I just bought this but selling due to need money to pay bills it's like you are selling an army that you literally just bought still in the brand new packaging and selling it at a discount because you've just got to get rid of it because you need to pay bills you're so addicted to games workshop that you couldn't even put aside money for your bills you had to buy the models is that a healthy relationship that people have with this company and no the answer is obviously no Games Workshop is cancerous when it comes to relationships. Don't support them. Don't support bad decisions. Support the good decisions. If they treat you well, treat them well back. But they're not treating you well. They're treating people like shit. They're treating us like we're dumb. Oh, yeah, we're making room for great new models. No, you're not. You're getting rid of models because you want to use more staff to build more Necromunda, more Blood Bowl, more Titanicus. That's where you want to put your resources. You want to sell people, you want to sell every person a box game. That's fine. You can try and make money however you want. That doesn't mean it's not unethical or immoral. Just because it's legal. 
and people have to stop defending them. You don't defend companies. You need to defend the consumer. You. You look after yourself first. Numero uno. Don't go out there and try and defend Games Workshop because you're afraid they might remove a product from production. If anything, Last Chance to Buy has shown you they will just remove a product from production. No fucking worries. They don't care about you, about what you want, what you need. They don't care if it's the only model you can buy to represent that character in your army. They will just take something away if they think it's good for them. Don't support it. Don't put up with it. Don't pay into their bullshit. Boycott them. Vote with your wallets. Buy what you need to and need to only. And even then, if you can, do what I am. Buy enough to build an army, build that army, and fucking sit on it. Just sit on that army. Don't build anything new, don't buy anything new. Yeah, do some trades with your mates if you want to get some interesting models to paint, or go buy something for another games company. But if enough people spend enough time not buying from them, maybe they'll actually rethink some of their business practices. Right now, their stocks are going through the roof. Because of good business practices? No, because they're selling very few models for a lot of money right now. The costs have doubled, practically, since the change to 8th edition. What they're selling individual models for in boxes has practically doubled, because they slightly increased the scale, and they're going, well, look, the models are bigger, so you've got to pay more. The models are marginally bigger. A Space Marine's head in height. Three cents of fucking plastic in a sprue. And people are going, oh, but Maka, you've got no idea. Plastic's expensive. Resin's expensive. Molds are expensive. Even though I've just destroyed those arguments on videos before. Provided the facts, the figures, my industry experience, other people's industry experience. I go out and I show you, I'm like, hey, molds are expensive. They're expensive if you want to make a single mold to make a single tank one time. But you make a hundred boxes of Space Marines and... You sell those boxes for sixty dollars each. Ten dollars of that sixty can be used to pay off that mold. And by the time you've sold your hundred moles, you've probably paid your mold off. Or your hundred box sets of marines, you would have paid your mold off at just ten dollars a box. And they're not just selling a hundred boxes; they're selling tens of thousands of space marines. Their molds are well and truly paid off. Believe me. Then you've got the models that are from the nineties. There are still models from the 90s, like the Plastic Corn Berserkers. Half the fucking Eldar range. And those models are still full price. And in fact, they've been inflated over time. Even though these models are from the fucking 90s. What, you don't think the design development costs have been paid off already? The artwork for the boxes? You don't think that was all paid off in the fucking 90s? Literally, all they need to do now is just make a new mold whenever the current one wears out, which takes a very long time. We're talking thousands of casts. Many tens of thousands of casts before you fully wear out a plastic injection mold. Yeah, you get a few hundred casts out and you got to recondition it, but that basically just means cleaning it with acetone and other solvents to get rid of any bits of plastic that may have stuck to it, polish the surface, it's good to go again. You produce kits from the 90s and you sell them at full price even now. If I wanted to sell a computer game from the 90s, would I still pay full price for it now? No, you don't. You can buy games like Diablo 2, Age of Empires for like $5. They were full price, $40, $50 games, American, when they first came out. But now they're $5 games. Why? Because time's gone on. They've paid for themselves. Development costs are down. Same thing happens in any other industry. A great one is um, when you're building things like tanks or aircraft for the military, or rifles even. The more you make of it, the machinery used to make it pays itself off, and in the end, you're just paying for raw materials and the labour to make them. So, things like the Messerschmitt, BF-109 Messerschmitt, everyone knows, World War II German fighter. They cost however many thousands of Deutschmarks when they first came out, Reichsmarks, whatever they were called, and then, because they built 39,000 of the fucking things, by the end, BF-109 was kept in production all the way through the war because it was cheap. They had the tooling as well, which helps in a war that you don't have to make new tooling. You just update the stuff you've got. And the planes go from being tens of thousands of dollars in the equivalent time to a couple of hundred dollars in the equivalent time. It's crazy, but that's how it works. Anyway, 
I've droned on enough. It's 20 minutes of me talking about how fucked Games Workshop is as a company, how they don't care about you. You know it. It's up to you if you can do something about it. You're a consumer. You have rights. And exercise a bit of courage and a bit of self-discipline. Don't just buy something. Don't just buy all this stuff on last chance to buy because they've chucked it up there. Buy what you need and that's all. Send them a message. Tell them you're not going to put up with this bullshit. You're just letting them do what they want to you right now. They're not going to rethink their practices if you just let them get away with it, guys. Make it with the outer circle. See you all next time.